Hi guys, welcome to the RC store and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be checking out the Roven RF5. Now we did another video on an F5. Feel free to check that out. We'll leave a little link at the top corner if you want to watch that. This particular one is a little different. Now it's supposed to have a lot of different components on it. They look like the same. This supposedly is the rally version. Let's have a look at it. These boxes are massive. Oh, I still can't get used to them. <laughs> All right, double boxed, um, which is always great. So you've got your outer casing, and then you've got a huge box inside. Just bear with me. Oh. Can't even see the car. You want to come check this out? Hi right, guys, this box looks packed. All right, what do we have here? First thing first that strikes me is this sheet here. It's all the decals, decal sheets, loads of decals. Some bits and bobs here. More bits and bobs. More bits and bobs. And a mystery box. Wow, that's big, isn't it? Literally, big, isn't it? <laughs> All right, let's get this protective cover off. This thing's massive. Right, guys, what I'm gonna do is get this out of the, sorry, get this out the box, um, get it on the bench, move this rubbish out of the way and get you back over to the other camera right guys so we've got the vehicle on on the bench now this particular car comes with loads of decals me and myself i don't like many decals i like detail um and i like paint so what you will be seeing in future videos because we've got loads of tamiya builds to do um we've got ourselves an airbrush kit we've got a compressor loads of paints and we're going to go and do some fancy paint jobs. We might actually do a fancy paint job on this, hence why we chose a white RF5. You can get these vehicles in two colors. Uh, you get them in white, or you can get them in a really nice gray. The gray is very similar to, you may have seen um, on a Porsche, arguments say crayon gray, or on an Ar Audi, Nardo gray. Very, very similar, or primer gray. Um, it's a very nice color and it pops quite well. Personally, I prefer that color. However, loads of people have chose that color because it's a very nice color, very popular. Me, being me, wanted to be completely different, so I went for the white, which allows me to dress it as I please, basically. I can paint it, I can do whatever I want, put some livery on it, and, and make it pop a little. Um, but however, this comes with a, a huge decal sheet. It comes with approximately three decal sheets. And on there, it gives you a list um, on how to basically put your livery on, on um, what panels and so forth. So for anyone that's interested in that, you've got that there. And these are the decals, um, quite detailed to be fair. So you've got some sun strips there, window trims, etc. You got some huge RF5 decals for the sides your rear exhaust imitations, your headlights, your backlights, and um, also the grills, etc. that are there. A couple of rally stickers, four wheel drive and so forth, just to make it look like the vehicle sponsored as a rally car would be. And then you've got your livery. Now these obviously go down the side, front and back of the vehicle. Um, not to my taste personally, However, some people actually like these, and if you do, um, this all comes with the vehicle and you can dress the car up. I don't know which way we're gonna go with this. Um, no idea whatsoever. Um, I think I need to explore some ideas and have a look and basically run with it. So what else do we get with this? 
you get your fuel can. Obviously these fuel cans come with every petrol uh, Rover vehicle with that two stroke. Obviously put your two stroke oil there to the correct ratio towards your petrol. Close it all up, give it a shake and it's ready to use. Pop it in your vehicle and um, you can't get your mixture wrong. Um, so very handy to have. Let's pop that there. And um, what else do we get? So we get a large plastic pack here. So you get a huge rally wing. That's nice. It looks like a two tier type of wing. You get some sort of protective plate. Is it protective plate? No, that actually is an intake. So that sits on the roof of the vehicle. I'll show you a bit later. You also get wing mirrors. So your plastic wing mirrors, just to give it that bit of detail, which is quite cool to be fair. So they would sit on the vehicle like so. And the other one would sit on the other side. And obviously you can paint these up, etc. So that's something we'll probably do as well um, for a later video, to be fair. So let's get all this to the side. Get your accessory pack. So in this accessory pack, you will get a dual cone uh, air filter. So you've got two protective layers there. You already get one with the vehicle, so this is a secondary one you get as a spare, as we found with all, all roving cars. You get a Tamiya style lead um, USB charger. So that's to charge your internal battery that's in the car. Some CV gate protectors in there, a couple of spare P-clips, and you will also get some nuts and bolts and washers and some hardware in there. A tool bag, so a tool bag comes with a plastic wheel wrench, it comes with a spanner wrench, your hex drive unit there, and you've got some Allen keys there as well. Um, always handy to have, however, don't rely on these. If you've got one of these vehicles, you should invest in a proper tool kit, but this will get you going. You got a little sheet from the RC store. This is basically a quick user guide, tells you how to fire up the vehicle, what you should and shouldn't do. With all these cars, being petrol RCs, they vibrate a hell of a lot. I can't stress how much you should go through all the nuts and bolts and lock tight every component. Where it's metal to metal, thread lock, lock tight, um, they, it should be applied. Uh, make sure they're all fastened tightly Last thing you want to be doing is bashing down the road and your wheel comes flying off. So here it's a, a sheet which tells you about a frame assembly. So this particular vehicle comes with a roll cage, which is going to be quite interesting as well. In an earlier video, you've probably seen us having a look and unboxing a Rovin F5. They say they're, they're pretty much the same car. So we were quite interested to see what, what the RF5 is about, because it's got an R at the start. Is it just the name as a rally car? Wheels that are different? We'll have a look. The instruction manuals that you get with the RF5 are exactly the same as an F5. They even state F5 on them. Um, so I don't believe Roven have taken out an additional manual for the RF5. All they've done is given you an additional sheet um, which says RF5 and shows you about some of the additional components uh, in terms of air vents and uh, wing mirrors and so forth and a few bits about the body roll cage. So they just added two pieces of A4 paper basically. Um, however, you do get your colour manual and in the manual itself, you've got your quick startup guide you got your exploded diagrams and all your diagrams have got uh, lines coming off with part numbers 
and you can search up them part numbers uh, towards the back I believe so if you do break a component there are multi languages there you can search up your part numbers and make sure you've got the correct part google it eBay it check it out and um, try and get a replacement alternatively go direct to Roven and order a spares they're pretty good over there right what else do we get here in the mystery box so the mystery box with the mystery controller let's see what remote control we got with this vehicle so with this we've got a fly sky and um, it's a fs3 gtb so quite a popular controller for this sort of range to be fair um, they come with lcd displays that backlit like a whitey blue color you've got your power button there You've got an adjustable controller that controls allows you to toggle through the screen. You've got your um, end, end and back button and your bind button there. Your um, steering trims, your throttle trims. You've got your third channel trim, your third channel. And um, you've got your direction and you've got your throttle and brake. And your wheel with a nice rubber grip on there. That's the antenna. Flipping over to the back, you can plug a charger in there and you can put a 2S battery if you wanted, uh, a LiPo 2S battery in this. Um, however, standard battery configuration in this is eight AA batteries. And that little tray in there is removable for your LiPo if that's what you wanted to do. Um, certainly, everyone just puts in two, well, eight AA batteries and off they go. So you've got that there. Right, let's move all this out of the way and let's get the car forward. So here's the beast, the RF5 guys. Um, as you can see, it looks a bit matte. The matte's a protective film on here, so don't worry about that. It'll be very glossy, obviously, once that's removed. But we won't be removing that in this video. Um, simple reason being, we haven't picked the livery or what we're doing with the actual shell. Uh, once that's done, we will then obviously remove everything and go take it on a wild bashing session. Let's get this... Um, before we do that, let's have a look at this properly. Uh, let, let's go around the vehicle. I'm going to turn, turn this towards the front. You can have a good look at it. It's got a nice protective bumper at the bottom there, which does stick out quite, quite a fair bit. But if you were to hit a curbside, etc., you'd hit that first before you hit the body, um, which is quite, quite helpful. You've got some nice rally style wheels. You've got some wings that protect the side skirts, as you can see, just along the bottom, which is a nice touch to be fair. Over on the back, you've got a rear diffuser, the vortex generators. Now in these holes is where your rear spoiler would sit. There's further holes towards the top of the car. So you've got three antennas, rally style antennas that sit at the top. And you've got your air scoop that sits in just here. Right, let's get this um, let's get this shell off and have a look inside. Take a look at that guys. That looks amazing. So the car itself, um, as you can see, very similar to a Roven F5. However, this is the rally version. And it does look and live up to its name in that respect. It's got a full roll cage on here, which looks phenomenal. Let me see if I can get this roll cage off somehow. Ah, there you go. Have a look at that, guys. Very well put together roll cage by Roven for the RF5. Really well. I'll uh, pop that to a side and let's look at the car itself. So 
So, first of all, it comes with a 36cc engine. Um, so 36cc two-stroke engine. You've got your air intake system. You've already got a spare air filter, so twin air filter, and you've got one already on the vehicle. This vehicle looks very, very, very similar to an MCD. Um, take that how you want to take it, but it looks very similar to the MCD. Uh, they do a version of this, which is a rally car, and it looks pretty much identical. I do know the parts are interchangeable. So just for you guys that want to know out there, yes, MCD parts do fit on this vehicle. So coming in a bit closer, you can see a tuned exhaust pipe system, which is highly polished and looks really nice. And looking towards the bottom of the vehicle, you can see the exhaust system popping out just here, uh, which I believe is a very, very nice finish. The chassis itself is made out of aluminium and you've got plastic sides, as you can see. You've got plastic wishbones. The tread on the tires looks quite well. The tires themselves are 160 by 65 tires and they class these as the rally tires so they can go on gravel um, and they can also go on grass and so forth. I don't know how well they'll take grass. However, I believe tarmac gravel shouldn't be an issue. Let's put this down. Okay, so you've got your pull start. Obviously this engine is shared with the 36cc Roven F5, the LT360 um, and so forth. So all the 36cc engines, I believe they're all the same. So you've got your pull start just there. Going over towards the back just here, you've got a nice large rear bumper, which has um, a bracing running across the top. You've got some huge body posts on this. These body mounts, uh, they're all plastic, seem very flexible, um, but I don't know, they're quite, they're quite tall. But I'm guessing with the roll cage on there, um, which supports her from the top, attaches to the front I'm guessing it brings it all together um, so it gets rid of that little wobble and play but guys plastic ain't a bad thing and um, these things can take beatings uh, plastic flexes as you can see at the front there and if it flexes it won't break so it's not a bad thing so coming over to the suspension oil field dampeners the dampeners themselves uh, are adjustable so you can adjust the spring rates on there the shock towers, um, where the actual suspension joins onto is adjustable, so you can change it to different mount settings, lower or higher, um, as you please there. You have got your rear um, adjustment on your uh, camber, and you've got really thick drive shafts, plastic wishbones. You do have some bracing when it comes into the vehicle just here. As you can see, I just moved that around. You can see the plastic bracing coming from the rear shock tower coming down onto the chassis. And over there, you can also see your um, prop shaft going across. Uh, over here, you've got your carburetor, your choke on it, your priming bulb, your fuel line in and out. Your breather cap, very important. As explained along across all our videos, it's quite important to have a breather cap, um, simply to let the gases that build up in your fuel tank out. If that's not there, your car will literally just cut out. Um, so a lot of people that have issues with RCs, uh, gas RCs, normally the problem could be this, and a lot of people don't see it or don't think of it. So make sure your car does have a breather cap. Um, breather caps sometimes can have, if you've got a removable cap, it can have a pinhole in it, uh, which works. Also, they can have additional pipes coming out or additional valves elsewhere. The cap on this particular one is spring loaded. And inside, it does have a fuel filter on the end of the line. It is quite a large fuel tank on this, to be fair. Um, so you can get a fair amount of running time out of this. Um, let me spin the car around the other way guys and then I'll talk you through the front round this side um, and summon it all up for you. So 
So coming round to the front of the vehicle to begin with, you've got a very large front bumper. The front bumper is supported with an, uh, another brace. It's all plastic, uh, quite thick plastic to be fair, but flexible. So I'm guessing it's quite durable. And that's connected to your shop towers. You've got your metal sway bars, as you can see, that run across here. And then go to your lower wishbones. You have your uh, billet suspension, which is adjustable spring rate on there. They're oil filled, so you can change the oil in here. So if you did want uh, thicker oil, uh, you can do that. You've got adjustable tie rods just here. And then if you want to adjust your camber, it's this bar across here. So you do have multiple settings there. Coming over here, you've got your servo saver, which is attached here. You've got two 75 kilo servos, aluminium horns on there, which is great for something straight out of the box. Um, you've got your rubber boot on your on and off switch, which is just here. It's got power. <laughs> here in this box here, I'll take this pin off and show you. In here you have your receiver and basically your additional wiring. So that just sits, tucks away there nicely. So if you did need to access that for whatever reason, uh, you can do. Now going over across here, you've got your disc brake. So this car comes with two disc brakes. It's got one just here and one just here. Now these disc brakes are vented. It does also have your uh, spur gear and your pinion gear, but they've both got plastic cover going over both of them. That's to protect you from getting any gravel or stones in there. If it gets in there, it will chew up absolutely your gears ridiculously. So it, that's, that's a good touch, that is, to be fair. Now, if you don't want to ruin your day bashing, I guess. Over across here, you've got your 75 kilo servo once again, exactly the same as the steering servos with the metal horn. Now, this controls your brakes as well as your throttle. Tuned pipe that we've already spoken about. And then over here, you have your battery. I'm not sure what's supplied with this vehicle. Um, I know on the F5, it came with a NICAD battery. Once again, yep, yeah, exactly the same. It's got a 4,500 milliamp NICAD battery in there with a Tamiya style charger. Um, so if you wanted to obviously charge that, it's a Tamiya style charging lead. Uh, but I'm not going to pull the battery out, you can see on the other F5 video. Um, it's just a standard NICAD battery that you'd use in your Tamiya's etc. I'll pop that closed. It's quite easy to get into all the components on this and um, quite a bit of space and room to work on. Going over to the rear of the vehicle. So here you can see your adjustable camber, your large drive shafts, rear metal sway bar, and you'll probably see it better here. Spin this around for you guys. So here, You've got your adjustment where you can change your shock settings on your shock tower. If you wanted your suspension to sit a bit lower, you put it to the higher setting. It's currently set on the lower setting. It's got billet aluminium shock towers. Once again, these parts are interchangeable and I'm pretty sure from what I've seen and heard, you can change them with MCD vehicle parts. Um, not something I've obviously done yet, but I believe you can do that. Got a nice large rear bumper, as you can see, with a great amount of bracing across it, which is all plastic, but very, very flexible. Just to show you guys, demonstrate look how flexible that is. So that's pretty cool. Bit of a beast, this one. I'm looking forward to taking this out, four wheel drive rally car. Um, as you've seen, We've got an F5, uh, not F5, this is a FG E30 M3. Uh, we did a little 30 second montage clips, etc. A little bit of a short video with that. You can check that out on our YouTube channel. Um, 
have a look at it, it was quite fun filming that to be fair. So I know the amount of fun that we can physically have with this is gonna be great. Right, let's get this shell back on and we'll see you in a second. So there you have it guys, the Roven RF5. Now watch out for this video because we will be assembling this. Um, I'm not gonna do it in this video because it will just take far too much of your guys' time. Um, you'll see it in the next Roven RF5 video. Um, I'll put the roof scoop on. I'll put the antennas on, I'll put the spoiler on. Uh, the mirrors I'll put on and I'll probably think about what I want to do with the livery, whether I want to leave it white, whether I want to dress it up a little, or maybe I want to put the factory decals on. Uh, that's something I need to think about. One thing I will say is from the factory, it does sag a bit on the suspension, as you can see on the front. So I believe we need to top up the shock oil. Alternatively, put some thicker shock oil in. Um, my idea of this vehicle, because we've got so many cars, I want to use it for the purpose it's been used for or what it's been brought for. I don't want to use this as a touring car or something like that. I want to use this as a rally car. I've got an F5 that I can use as a touring car, which is four wheel drive. I can use my E30 as a rear wheel drive touring car. This I want to use as a proper rally car. So I will be having it stacked up like that uh, once all the oils are filled and setting this up and making it look phenomenal. Guys, if you like our content, if you want to see these videos and you don't want to miss some, please, please, please like, share and subscribe to our channel and smash that notification button so you don't miss any of our new content. And if you do want to make any comments, please feel free to write comments. We're there to support. Uh, loads of people have commented and we reply back to as many people as possible. And if there's any feedback, any help you guys need, from our knowledge, we will help you. We will guide you as much as we physically can. Um, we're not here just to obviously promote our vehicles or promote our store. It's nothing about that. We're RC lovers. Like I said, all these vehicles that we own are not sponsored and they're bought by us. So that just goes to show that we're here for pure passion of the RCs. Um, so if there is any advice you guys need, just comment below. We see you on the next one. Take care.